Hello, everyone. Today, I want to talk about a very commonly encountered topic in computational fluid dynamics, and that is numerical diffusion. Um, as you know, one of the most common schemes or popular schemes that are used for the treatment of advection um, in CFD is the so-called first order upwind differencing scheme. Uh, it's almost the default scheme uh, used in most codes. And associated with that is what's called numerical diffusion. So in the literature, you will often see such a statement that the use of first order upwind differencing introduces numerical diffusion into the solution. So this video talks about what does that actually mean? So to get started, we will look at the one-dimensional advection diffusion equation. And obviously our framework is the finite volume uh, framework. So this is the one-dimensional advection diffusion equation. As you can see, this is your advective flux right there. And then this is your diffusive flux. And of course, on the right-hand side, you have some sort of a source term. As you know, most transport equations used in CFD um, has this framework or format uh, where phi is the so-called transported scalar, gamma is the so-called diffusion coefficient. So for example, for um, heat transfer, this would be Cp times temperature, this would be thermal conductivity, and then on the right-hand side, you would have some sort of source. Similarly for fluid flow, this would be one of the components of the velocity vector. This would be the dynamic viscosity, okay? When we do a finite volume integration, this is what we end up getting. Essentially, it's a flux conservation equation. So this is the advective flux on the Eastern phase, the diffusive flux on the Eastern phase, advective flux on the Western phase, diffusive flux on the Western phase. We subtract the two and we get what's produced inside the control volume, the source term. Now, for the diffusive term or the diffusive flux, we typically end up using central difference. We all know that from our basic uh, study of numerical methods. So d phi dx on the Eastern phase right here can be written as the phi value here minus the phi value there divided by the distance, which is delta x in this case for a uniform mesh. Now associated with that, of course, is the fact that there is a truncation error that results from the higher order terms in the Taylor series expansion, right? So this is the central difference approximation. And the remainder is really what we call truncation error. Of course, this error for central difference is second order as denoted by that power two right there. So grid spacing to the power two, which is second order. Now, for upwind differencing, which is going to be applied to the advective flux right here. So we have to somehow approximate this in terms of cell center values, that and that, in terms of cell center values. Uh, we can also use a Taylor series expansion to derive our uh, first order upwind differencing scheme. The reason I get back to the Taylor series expansion is that um, you need to carry through the truncation error terms to be really clear on where numerical diffusion actually comes from, okay? So this is a Taylor series expansion of this central node not about the Eastern phase. So in other words, it's a backward Taylor series expansion and that's why you have a, a minus delta X over two showing up here, okay? And then the next term would be minus delta X over two square, which gives you back a plus sign and then the cubic term is negative and so on. So it's alternating positive negative terms. If I rearrange that, then I can write phi east in terms of the cell center value phi naught. And of course we still have these uh, higher order terms, okay? But again, this is the approximation that we are going to use first order upwind. And all these terms are thrown away. And those terms essentially represent your truncation errors. So let's do that substitution and see what happens. So before I do that, just to summarize, here is what your upwind differencing scheme in general looks like. So the 
phi at the eastern face, depending on whether it's positive or negative flow, would be either P naught, the upstream value. This is the upstream value if it's positive flow. This is the upstream value if it's negative flow. Okay, likewise for the western face. So we now substitute all that. And before I substitute, I'm just going to make this simple uh, assumption, mainly to get rid of you know, the subscripts, simplify the notation. And this is what I'm doing now. So you can see I've substituted in phi naught instead of phi east because I'm looking at positive flow. Similarly, I've substituted in phi capital west instead of phi small west. Uh, and then here is my central difference approximation for the diffusion terms. Likewise, I can do the same thing for negative flow. Okay, so these are my governing equations now um, from the finite volume scheme for the 1D advection diffusion equation using first order upwind and central differencing for diffusion. Okay, so as we said, in the literature, we often say that that introduces numerical diffusion. The question is, what does that really mean? Okay, to understand that, let's do some tricks here. So we are going to try to ascribe a physical meaning to these equations, okay, or to these approximations. So recall that in uh, first order upwind differencing, this is what we used. This is our approximation. And then we have a bunch of terms that we dropped. Okay, now imagine that we want to, instead of using first order upwind, we want to use second order upwind. Okay, now to be able to do that, obviously I have to now extend this to include this term also in the Taylor series expansion so that my truncation error now becomes second order. Okay, this is first order, of course. Okay, so if I wanted to construct a second order scheme, I need to include that term so that the leading order error term becomes power two or second order. All right, which is what I'm doing here, as I'm saying now that this is now my approximation. And this is my truncation error. If I did that and now plug that into my governing equation, so instead of just one term, I now have two terms, right, in both cases. And that then becomes my governing equation from finite volume using second order upwind or UD2. Okay. If I rearrange, then this is what I end up getting. Okay, it's a simple just algebra and you can see this is what I'm getting. So in the next slide, what I'll do here is I'll just summarize the two schemes. So here is my original first order upwind. We already derived this, okay? And now I have this sort of concocted second order scheme where I have introduced or included these additional terms, okay? The linear term from the Taylor series expansion, okay? Now the UD2 scheme that I have that equation there can further be written in a different way. Now think of what's pre-multiplying this d phi dx. Now, as you know, diffusion is always some diffusion coefficient times the gradient, right? That's how we write our diffusion fluxes using the so-called gradient diffusion hypothesis. So, if you think of the term pre-multiplying the d phi dx, that's your effective diffusion coefficient, right? So in the first order upwind scheme, it's just gamma. In the second order scheme, it's gamma minus this term, which is what I have here, okay? That's your effective diffusion coefficient. Now we can alternatively write it like this, okay? And this term is, the so-called grid Peclet number, it's actually non-dimensional. This is kind of like Reynolds number, except it uses grid spacing as the length scale. So it, you can see rho u l over some viscosity, right, gamma. So this is uh, called the Peclet number in general for transport phenomena, depending on whether you're looking at heat transport or mass transport or momentum transport, um, they take on different meanings, but in general, it's called the Peclet number. It's a non-dimensional number. And in this case, it's the grid Peclet number. In other words, it's based on the grid spacing. So one of the things you see here is that now, if I compare the, the effective diffusion coefficient between the first order and second order schemes, clearly uh, this guy here is always smaller than um, the actual value of gamma because of this negative term here. Why? 
because you can see we are looking at positive flow in this case, right? So rho u is always positive, delta x is always positive, gamma is always positive. So this entire term, this Peclé number is always positive. And therefore, we are subtracting out something from one, which makes the effective diffusion coefficient smaller than the original diffusion coefficient, gamma. In other words, another way of thinking of it is that in first order upwind, we have more diffusion than we have in second order upwind, okay? Because the effective diffusivity is larger in first order upwind than in second order upwind. So this difference is what we refer to as numerical diffusion. It is simply a result of the fact that in first order upwind, we throw away all terms, including the linear term, when we substitute for phase values, okay? Um, so first order upwind is giving you more diffusion than second order upwind. Now, why are we doing everything relative to second order upwind? Because second order upwind makes the schemes consistent. You're using second order for cent uh, central differencing for diffusion. So if you wanted the same order of accuracy for advection, you should go second order for advection as well, okay? And when you do that, you get a certain effective diffusion coefficient. But when you compare that to first order, you find that the diffusion coefficient there is actually larger. And that's why we say that this is diffu uh, extra diffusion that has been introduced by the first order scheme, okay? Often referred to as numerical diffusion. One of the things you find also that is that this extra diffusion or this numerical diffusion is dependent on the grid Peclé number. So three things come in here. One is the grid spacing. So if you make the grid coarse, you will have more diffusion, more numerical diffusion. If the flow velocity, or in, in other words, the flow ve velocity vis-a-vis -vis the diffusion coefficient is high, uh, you will also have higher, uh, higher numerical diffusion. Non-dimensionally, it really depends on the grid or local Peclé number, okay? So if the Peclé number is high, uh, and you can imagine that's similar to higher Reynolds, local Reynolds number in the case of momentum transport, you're going to get more numerical diffusion. Now, what is the uh, manifestation of numerical diffusion? Here is what happens. Let's look at a solution. So I am looking at a problem, a very simple problem where I have a 1D slab because I'm solving the 1D diffusion equation or advection diffusion equation with phi equal to one on the left face and phi equal to zero on the right face, okay? Um, if I have pure diffusion, think of heat conduction, I'm going to have a linear profile, right? Which is this case, no advection, no flow, all right? Now, as I increase the Reynolds number of the flow or the Peclé number for general transport phenomena, then what will happen is obviously Peclé number, remember, is rho u delta x over gamma, right? So if the flow speed is high, then Peclé number will be high. And so what happens is this boundary condition one gets washed all the way downstream until it rapidly drops to satisfy the downstream boundary condition, okay? So you are going to get steeper and steeper profiles with higher Peclé number. And this is where numerical diffusion gives you this smearing effect. You don't capture that sharp gradient as well. You get a smeared solution when you use first order upwind compared to second order upwind. So that's the manifestation. Anything that is kind of uh, supposed to be sharp, okay, in terms of capturing gradients, um, that gets smeared out and you get more sort of diffusive smeared profiles. So that summarizes our uh, discussion of numerical diffusion. Now, of course, the upwind differencing two scheme that I concocted here is not the way you really use it because that uses still gradients as you, as you saw here. Um, you know, I'm still substituting in these gradients, but um, that's not what you would do in a real upwind differencing scheme. You would have to express that in terms of cell center value. So that's just a word of caution in the end I'm uh, putting in here that don't try to use that as the actual upwind differencing, second order upwind differencing scheme. So hopefully this explains what numerical diffusion is and thank you.